Hello, I'm Foxy Red for a Blue Fox Tail Studio, and today we at BFS bring you IDW's T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue one. This comic dub is sponsored by Green Star Miami LLC and includes mild narration of the panels for the visually impaired. The TMNT was created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, and the rights belong to Nickelodeon. IDW owns the comic book rights. This comic was written by Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz. The artwork was drawn by Kevin Eastman, Dan Duncan, and Sam Keith. This video will now start for your viewing pleasure. Enjoy! This how it's gonna be, Splinter! Dark clouds gather. The mutant cat points at Splinter and the turtles. You're gonna hide like a coward behind those... those freaks? The skies rumble threateningly, followed by an unnatural calm. Who's he calling freaks? Has he seen himself? Yo, pot meat kettle. Silence, Michelangelo. The rat turns to the cat. Old Hop, this need not happen. We are not here to fight. We only want this neighborhood left in peace. Yeah. But then... The calm vanishes. Old Hob gets ready to fight. Well, you can keep on wanting, rat! Old Hob orders the gang to attack. Waste them all! The gang attacks the turtles and Splinter. Splinter talks to the turtles as he fights. My sons, the storm has broken. None must die. It's wrath unleashed. I wish someone told them that! The turtles and Splinter are fighting the gang off. Donnie is holding one guy by the neck with his staff as he kicks another in the chest. <clears throat> and each of us... Leo flips in the air and uses his dual swords to cut down the gang members' weapons. Must face its torrential rage. Don't worry about them, Donnie. Just do it the way Master Splinter had taught us. What? In his own way. Train this! Mikey manages to whack a couple guys in the face with his nunchucks. <laughs> Our individual techniques are as unique as each new crash of thunder. Old Hob throws a gang member back into the fight after the man was thrown out of it. Get in there! I want that stinking red and those slimy reptiles dead! Bo Staff? Kicks one guy in the head and strikes another guy in the face at the same time. Coldly analytical and deliberate. Nails a guy with a gun in the throat with his staff. Bo Tie! Gurk! Militantly disciplined and imprecise. <laughs> Leo kicks a guy with a knife in the chest. Oof! Mikey destroys the man's family jewels with a kick. Absurdly unorthodox and carefree. Oh. Mikey turns away. 
No baby gangsters for you, dude. Splinter and Old Hob square off. Idiots! Old Hob heads for Splinter. I guess if I want something done right... Wretchedly misguided and vengeful. I gotta do it myself! And with the bittersweet experience of centuries. I'm gonna tear you apart! Old Hob swings at Splinter and the rat dodges. I have defeated Old Hob before. Then, as now, the battle was fierce. Splinter hits the cat in the throat. Blah! Then the rat swings and hits the cat in the stomach. But what was once solely a fight for survival, Splinter clocks Old Hob in the jaw, has become very personal. Come on, guys! Keep on pressing them! Leo is attacking with his swords. You think they got the message? Mikey flips and swings his nunchucks at a couple of dudes. Yep, it'll still be ringing loud and clear in their ears tomorrow. Donnie's staff gets personal with a man's head. Then, we can only hope... Splinter shoves up Old Hob. ...that they heed the sound. You're dead! No, Old Hob. Not today. With his walking stick used like a weapon, he swats Old Hob in the face. Ah! The cat landed on the ground and is getting to his feet. Eventually, the tempest subsides. You... I'll gut you yet, Red. You'll see. All of you. Just like that other stinking freak. You're all gonna disappear and be forgotten forever! Once the cat is on his feet, he leaps over a fence. Leo and the other two turtles are about to give chase. Come on, guys. Let's get... <sighs> Master. Splinter stops him from going after Old Hob. No. We are done here, my sons. We must go. The three turtles look sad, and Splinter sheds a tear as they think about the missing member of their family. Raphael. We now see a maskless mutant turtle in only a trench coat as Splinter finishes his narration. We have not forgotten it. It is simply the calm before the next storm. Eighteen months earlier, we can see it's during the day, and we get our first look at the stock gen. We can also hear April from inside the building. Oh my gosh. We see a tank with four baby turtles, one in the corner of the foreground of the panel, one in the background on a rock, one in the right foreground are a pair of baby turtles, and one standing on top of the other. Those turtles are so cute. April is watching the turtles in the tank as she's speaking to a male scientist who is standing right behind her. What are these little guys here for, Mr. Allen? Just Chet. Um, but please. April looks at him with a smile. I'm sorry, Chet. Th thanks. The turtles are part of a special study we've been working on for a little while now. Chet turns away from April as he keeps speaking. Something to do with, um, genetic regeneration, but I'm not really directly involved with it. Hmm. Interesting. April goes back to watching the turtles. Y yeah. I do get to feed them sometimes. Maybe you can um, help me next time. They feed each other as they continue their conversation. That'll be cool. I guess there's more to this place than just bioengineering livestock to feed to starving third world countries, huh? Maybe it's some um, to make lots of turtle soup. <laughs> Ew! Who wants to eat those little guys? They're so ador- April once again turns back to the tank and freaks out seeing it right on top of the tank. Whoa! Is that a rat? April gets ready to smack the rat off the tank with the clipboard. 
Oh, don't worry about him. He's part of uh, another special project. He's always running around the place. Free? Yeah, we we have a hard time keeping him contained, but uh, like I said, he's harmless. April sets the clipboard down. If you say so, just please don't tell me he's part of some rap soup program or I'm gonna hurl. <laughs> Rat soup. Chet then leads April away from the tank. Come on, we sh should probably get you to human resources. They should um have your new intern badge ready to pick up. And then I guess I'll be official, huh, Chet? Yeah. April and Chet leave the room. Well, welcome to Stock Gen Research, Miss O'Neill. Just April is fine, Chet. Thanks. April looks back at the tank one last time, and we see that the rat is watching them leave. The next panels show Stockman in his office, watching his employees from above a window. When his secretary calls him over the phone. Dr. Stockman. Yes, Margaret? Sir, General Crane is calling from Burno Island. He's on line one. Thank you, Margaret. Baxter hits the button on line one. General Crane. How are you this fine day? How goes the war? Frankly, Stockman, the war and I will both be a lot better when I know things are advancing more rapidly on your end. We see Crane's base and can hear him inside one of the builds. You're past due in getting me the latest sit rep in the tests I ordered, and I'm tired of waiting! I understand your concerns, General. But I assure you that, despite the minor delay in our report, everything is well under control. Now we see Baxter holding an open file, though we can't read what it says. My technicians tell me we have made significant progress in both the Terrapin Human Exoarmor Synthesis and the Laurentia Psychotropic Serum Test. We see an office with big windows, with light shining through them. And there's a silhouette of a man figure and deck. Spare me the academic drivel, Stockman. I want you to tell me how much blasted longer I'm going to have to wait to get what I'm paying you all this money for. Baxter is on the phone. General Krang, I promise you we will have everything you've acquired from us completed in short order. Including the mutagen? Yes, General including the super soldier mutagen and i will deliver them all to you personally just as soon as they are ready we see a gloved fist see that you do stockman i've got a war to fight and i will not accept any more delays baxter's looking through his indoor window again again my apologies for my tardiness but when all is said and done general Crang, i'm confident you will find the wait is worthwhile Baxter is looking at the turtle tank in Splinter. Very worthwhile, indeed. In the last panel, Splinter is looking up at Baxter. Three months later, Splinter is watching April, Lindsay, and Chet talking and working. You really have taken to those turtles, April. I'm expecting you to steal them and take them home any day now. Ha! Huh. I wish I could, Lindsay. They're just so precious. April is eyeing Splinter from the corner of her eye as he sits on top of the turtle tank watching her. The rat, though? Not so much. Lindsay looks up from her computer. Splinter? He's not so bad once you get to know him. Lindsay goes back to the computer while April looks at her. What are you guys calling Splinter anyways? Oh, well, he's part of a psychotropic drug test we're running. The drug's effect is like splitting or splintering the animal's nature in two basically separating out of capacity for human-like cognition from the instinctual animal state in theory, at least. April looks confused, and Chet is motioning Lindsay to stop talking. Psychotropic drug test? What in the heck does that have to do with bioengineering me? April looks at Lindsay when she didn't answer. Lindsay? I just remembered I'm supposed to be in a technical update meeting right now. I, uh, I'll see you guys later. Lindsay rushes out leaving Chet and a confused April behind. Well, that wasn't too weird. Yeah, uh... You know how those sticky types can be. April looks at Chet. Uh, Chet? Where are the techie types? 
Chet goes over to the turtle tank. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, April, y you should give these guys names too. You're around them so much. Actually, I already have. Chet looks surprised. R really? What are they? We see the four turtles in the tank, three in the foreground, and one in the background away from the other three. Okay, let's see. The little guy standing all still and quiet is Leonardo. The one studying that bug is Donatello. And the one gorging himself on lettuce is Michelangelo. Chet raised a brow at April. Uh, I have history of Renaissance Arts 101 this semester. <laughs> Chet points to a little turtle in the back that wasn't named yet. Um, okay. So, um, w what about that guy? We see an overhead of the turtle in question as April talks over the panel. Oh, the feisty one? That's Raphael. Present day. It's night time, and we see the mutant in the trench coat digging through a dumpster. Come on, come on. He scores a pizza box that was thrown away. Bingo. Dinner is served. He looks inside the pizza box. He found it in the trash. There's hardly any pizza left over. He's very disappointed. Damn. This ain't gonna cut it. Okay. He eats what's there and climbs out. What's next? He goes to another trash can and finds a t-shirt that says Cowabunga. Oh, now that's just wrong. He tosses a shirt away and hears a crash. What the? He looks at the house behind the trash can and in the window he can see two figures in it. No, don't. Please. Shut up. One is beating the other up all while the turtle watched. Get up. I said get up! The one doing the beating grabs the other by the shirt as we see Casey's scared face. He grabs onto the man's arm to keep him from hurting her. Come on, just stop. You're, you're freaking wasted again. Just go to bed and leave me alone. Get up, you piece of garbage! Let me go, Dad. The turtle looks mad as he watches. Dad? The dad is about to hit Casey. No damn good, Casey. You was never no damn good. I hate that you was ever born. The turtle breaks down the door and draws the attention of the two humans. Huh? Who the? You know what I hate, jerk face? Stinking bullies. Let me show you how much. The last page we see is of the mutant turtle in the doorway getting ready to fight. Well, that was the first issue of the IDW TMT Comic Run. Issue 2 will come out as soon as we at Blue Fox Tail Studios can make it possible. This video was produced, edited, and directed by Foxy Redfur. The voice of the narrator was Senpai Jello. The voice of Splinter was that guy. The voice of Old Hog is a couple spiders. The voice of Mikey is Flamian Foxar. The voice of Leo is Astro Maps. The voice of Donnie is that guy. The voice of April is Mini Taurus. The voice of Chet is a couple spiders. The voice of Lindsay is Starkin. The voice of Baxter Stockman was Senpai Jello. The voice of Crane is Kafka Castlestone. The voice of Raph is Belly Alios. The voice of Casey was Quang. The voice of Hun was Oscar Q. The voice of Margaret was Digi Tiger 96. The voice of the gang members is Flimmy and Foxar. The music in this video for, for both the outro and the intro was made by me, Foxy Redford. The character of Foxy Redford was created by Jimmy Jones. Foxy's VR model was created by Silent Remy. The character design of Foxy was put together by Jimmy Jones and Shibi Squid. Thank you for watching from the Blue Fox Tail Studios team. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you like this video. Bye bye!